We are tired of people in their 40s and 50s bashing this little 20-year-old girl when the white NPC organizations don't treat their denouncers or what they call their droppers like this. They don't go back and forth with them. That looks bad on the organization. I'm supposed to do business and philanthropic work with someone who's cursing and yelling and screaming back and forth with somebody online. Why would I want to do business with that group? It's not a good look. Funky Dineva went on this very nasty diatribe about this 20-year-old young woman, Zora Sanders, and her denouncement. It's very ugly. I'm only going to play a little bit of it, and then I'm going to tell you what God put on my heart about it. It's so vulgar, I don't want to play a lot of it. They wanted me to talk about people denouncing fraternities and sororities because there's a case out of D.C., the Alpha chapter, a girl pledged Delta, and then y'all shortly after crossing Delta, she don't renounce her doggone letters. Y'all, here's the thing. Um, at first, I was being very sympathetic to people renouncing and denouncing fraternities and sororities, right? But... Here is where I'm at with it in 2024. At this point, it's a bunch of BS, okay? There are enough resources online, enough videos, and enough podcasts online that spell out, that completely spell out everybody's religious objections and what parts of the oath and what parts of the initiation processes that people are having an issue with. All of the information is there, okay? All of the information, why people are renouncing, denouncing, and all of this is already there. This is what we need y'all to do so we can wrap this up. Everybody who was a part of a fraternity or a sorority currently, who is thinking about renouncing, denouncing, and announcing, can you please just go ahead and do it by the end of this month so we can be done with this? If you plan to renounce, denounce, or announce, can you please hurry up and wrap this up? As a matter of fact, I challenge every Greek letter organization, all of them should have a denouncement week. They should have denouncement week where they will actually refund everybody 50% of their initiation fees so we can already get this all over with and be done with it. So we can just get it all, just purge everybody. If you are on the fence about it, if you are having uh, confusion about it, do us a favor. Get out our organizations. Talk about you people who renounce, denounce, and announce. Then what y'all do is y'all all meet up at Bennigan's in the Golden Corral and y'all form a whole nother organization of bitter bitches. Y'all renounce, denounce, and announce one sorority or fraternity to just meet up at Bennigan's and create another one. Make it make sense. Now y'all a whole support group of bitter bitches who dropped out the sorority. And here's the funny thing. If I'm going to renounce, denounce, and announce, I'm going to be done with the organization. I'm going to be done not meeting up once a month at Bennigan's like a chapter meeting to sit around and talk about the organization and talk about the people that's in it and talk about how we better because we renounce, denounce, and announce. You drunk out of one sorority and right into another one. Make it make sense. Make it make sense to me. Make it make sense. Make it make sense, okay? Make it make sense. And last but not least on this, and I'm going to move the hell on. 
the oath of the organizations, the, the one line that people take uh, uh, take exception with is, you know, I pledge, I pledge this oath for all my days, and I da, 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 whatever it is to say, because everybody's organization on one level or another says the same type of thing. I pledge this all my life to all my days, whatever. I honestly don't think that any reasonable person, any reasonable Christian takes that oath and in that moment is placing their organization before their Lord and Savior. Y'all religious radicals pick and choose what parts of the Bible that y'all want to take so doggone literally. And I'm going to tell y'all something. There is not a bitch alive that can tell me about sin or read to me about any moral objection they have about something in the Bible and they wear mixed fabrics. Come on to mix, mixed fabrics, girls. All the mixed fabrics, girls. You can't have on no fabric blend and talk to me about anything in the Bible, baby. You can't eat shrimps, bitch. Can't a damn bitch that eat that red lobster tell me nothing about what's in the Bible? Can't a damn bitch that eat a shrimp, a crustacean, a lobster tell me anything that's in the Bible? Can a bitch that eat pork chop tell me about any type of sin in the Bible? Can a bitch that have on a cotton rayon blend tell me anything about what's in the Bible. Now, how is it that y'all could take the fabric portion and the shrimp portion and you can roll that forward and adjust it for where life is in 2024? You can adjust it to fit where we are today. But oh, this part and that part, you want to hold on and keep it in 32 B.C. I'm just asking you to make it make sense. So many things there. I'm going to try to get straight to a point. To Funky Dineva and his fans. The only secret is the secret of how to get closer to Jesus Christ in your quiet times with the Lord. That's the only secret society I want to join. So if some YouTubers who used to be a part of the D9 want to get together at Benigan's or wherever once a month to share their secret of how they overcame the idolatry in the D9 then they can do that they can do that the only secret organization that's not a secret it's only a secret when you're going through the process and then when God allows you to speak to help better others' lives through your example, then he allows you to speak. The problem with the D9 is that you can never speak about how this organization is bettering your lives. We see the philanthropic work. Um, we see the external things. Um, how, how is this organization strengthening, you know, your family ties? How is it, you know, how do people in the community feel a sense of oneness and togetherness with you because of the tenets of the organization? I, you know... One will argue that 
the secret society of Christians coming together and going through their secret process, praying with the Lord, and then allowing him to tell them to allowing him to tell them when to reveal to the public about how God has helped them in the secret and quiet place. That is the greatest sorority and fraternity fraternal organization of all. I would say fraternal organization because that's for sororities and fraternities. I can and and I will quickly tell you no joke. I can be with many different Christians and in many different um settings, whether at work, um, at my college, um, random strangers online. The connection amongst Christians who take the Bible literally not literally like poking an eye out, out, but literally relative to the day and time in which we live. And by the way, poking an eye out, that verse in the Bible never meant actually poking an eye out. But anyway, the, the fraternal organization of Jesus Christ is what you tap yourself fully into it as much as possible. I mean, we finish each other's sentences. It's like you read in my brain. We're finishing each other's sentences. Um, I had a person the other day, I didn't even open my mouth to finish the sentence that I was saying. And he says, yes, I tell my mom I'm proud of her every day. Like, I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even open my mouth. I didn't even have a thought. And he's done this several times. Like, he's literally said, what I was thinking in my brain several times. This has happened with me, with men and women. Um, One lady at my church about um, five years back, no, seven years back at my old church, Los Angeles Church of God in Christ, just, you know, I don't know, I feel like, I'm like, I don't want to name drop, but I feel like for some reason the Holy Spirit is telling me to do that uh, anyway she just came up to me and she said I feel and this is a lady that was sitting on the other side of the church at the end of one of the services the lady came up to me and just said I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me to give you a hug at this time Nobody really knew that I was having money troubles and I I was going to move out of Los Angeles probably a month and a half later and fly back home to Florida. Not a lot of people knew that. Um, nobody at the church knew that. And so I, the, the number one fraternity of all the number one fraternal organization of all is, I could tell you many other instances, but I'll cut it short, the fraternal organization of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Talking about these women's, oh, they don't wear expensive fabrics as if uh, um, I can only listen to um, people who, you know, these female, black female, many of them single, many of them not, Christian evangelists because they wear nice fabrics and they're educated and they're in in Delta or they're AKAs. I can only listen to those types. The idea of that is asinine. God did not designate a type of person that can that is the only type of person authorized to to um, tell you what the Holy Spirit is saying to the people. 
she has to be of your same quote unquote class level to even speak to me. Ain't nothing you could tell me because you eat at Bennigan's and you eat shrimp with that, um, you know, two thread tight shirt or something. You wearing polyester and cotton at the same time. You know, yes, I've seen a lot of these, uh, you know, videos and support of Zora. A lot of the women are wearing cotton t shirts. So what? I grew up in Florida in a majority white shirt in a majority white church. And guess what? The people that had money, they dressed just like those women um in those um supporting videos for Zora on TikTok. They dress like those women. They, um, you know, jeans, t-shirt, when you're out running errands or when you're at college or when you're at school, they didn't give away their, you know, they didn't buy the way they dress, let you know how much money they had. You know, they didn't give away their status. And you're talking about, uh, you know, a lot of these, you know, in summation, a lot of these um, women in these D9 organizations compared to, uh, you know, the NPC white organizations, let's be honest, they can have a doctor degree, and I have a doctor degree. They can have master's degrees. They can be 20-year members of Delta Sigma Theta, some of them evangelists. Some of them work at universities. Too many single women in the divine nine. If you call yourself prestigious, how come you couldn't acquire a man and you're knocking on 50, you're knocking on 45? What is it about you that's a repellent to them? Talk about these women in t-shirts all they want, all you want to. Whether they have money or not, that sweet spirit that they have, that is highly attractive. How many women, I now live in Southeast Georgia, how many women that dress like that, uh, especially white women that have their four and five kids in the Walmart with their husband who's just staring them down like he can't get off of her, excuse my French, and she's just in a ponytail and a t-shirt. And these are young, middle-class black couples. These are young, middle-class white couples. These are poor whites. Um, these are upper-class people of all colors, Indians. People are, you know, they come into Walmart, they go around town, they're not always dressed. They're wearing t-shirts at the different um, county fair and and sometimes the church. They're literally wearing t-shirts and they have four or five kids. They're like sitting close to each other in church. I'm like, dog, okay, church is almost over. You, you know, you'll have your little fun time when you get home you know just calm down like they love each other these people their children love them they you know they just it's just family time at the store it's such a blessing to see why doesn't why don't I see enough of that in the divine nine with educated black women in general why are we going into our late 40s and 50s we need to open our options okay because the statistics are not there okay why are we stubborn and don't want to do that you want love you desire love but, oh, I, I can't marry a, a man of another race. Why are we so mean-spirited <laughs> about every little aspect, even if it's to our detriment? You want someone to physically touch you sexually, but you'd rather 
literally die on that hill alone because of a skin color and a culture you don't feel like learning. You know, those women in t-shirts, they'd be the ones that attract, just their nice personality, they're the ones that attract, you know, that Christian mind reader type of love, but on a romantic level. Do you understand how mind-blowing the sex probably is on a level you can't even describe? You don't even understand if you can't stop misquoting the Bible and get into right alignment with the Lord and let Him read your mind and tell you, what to say, say to the people. Funky Dineva can't even begin to comprehend the sorority and fraternity of Christianity. Let me quickly read part of Jude. And I'm going to, quick disclaimer, the book of Jude is one chapter. So when I say I'm about to read the book of Jude, don't be like, oh, this video is going to be another 18 minutes. Nope. The book of Jude is literally one time, one chapter, the entire book of Jude. The whole, I felt it strong in my spirit. The Holy Spirit say, read the book of Jude. And when I just read the book of Jude, for probably the second time ever. Notice some things that I'm about to say. That seem like they're related to the character of Funky Dineva. His fans that are hating on the denouncer woman. The denouncer woman herself. How we Christians need to refute people who are teaching the Bible incorrectly oh is it eating shrimps in the bible not uh, and y'all eat shrimps anyway you know he trying to say y'all ghetto anyway y'all don't dress this way isn't wearing certain threads in the bible all of this what god is more focused on you know the that your heart is right eating seafood and all of this he's just being nitpick he's just being nitpicky the seafood verses and the fabric fabric verses are like the poking your eye out verse any scholarly bible reader knows that it's not he's just being nitpicking and, and misquoting the bible and i think even he not really being into Christianity, also knows that he's misquoted the Bible. He's college educated. I think he went to FSU, Funky Dineva. He knows this. He's just being funny. And anytime you have to curse at someone online, you've already lost. You feel like you're losing the war. Let's read Jude. <clears throat> and catch the shade. I won't spell it to you. You'll catch it. But also catch what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to us Christians. <clears throat> Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. Mercy and peace and love be yours in abundance. The sin and doom of ungodly people. Dear friends, although I was eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only 
sovereign and Lord. Notice how, you know, fucking Dineva is misquoting the Bible to justify whatever's going on in, in Delta. Though you already know all of this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse uh, on celestial beings and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare condemn him for slander, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Remember what I said earlier, um, fighting in public, going back and forth, doesn't look good for your organization. In particular, Delta Sigma Theta and the organization or the business of Jesus Christ. No, I'm not going to argue back and forth with you. I'm going to let the Lord handle you. Um, and in, in, in the sorority case, let the organization, the national headquarters handle it. The back and forth with the young lady is not What's going on now is, is that's not a good look. He said, no, the Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand. And the very things they do understand by instinct as irrational animals do will destroy them. Woe to them. They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's era. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's era. Funky didn't even know good and well the shrimp versus the blended fabric versus like the like I said like the eye verse is is not punching your eye out if you looked at a woman immorally is not to be taken literally. He's doing this to get a kiki and a laugh and to get more views. He even said, oh, um, they're going to get me over this one or something. He said, oh, they, they really going to like this. Hey, no. Woe to them. They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's era. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clowns without rain, blown along, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom Blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others 
for their own advantage. A call to persevere. A call to us Christians to persevere. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear, meaning the fear of the Lord, hating even the clothing stained by corrupt flesh. Doxology, lastly, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy word. Amen.